West Point's history, landscape, and status as a cultural and political center provided activists the opportunity to stage protests and really spread their message. Um, and the politics of Berlin are reflected in the landscape. And um, wherever, whenever you have a city with such strong uh, politics, activism will always follow um, because they kind of just are connected in that way um, and just go hand in hand. And there are plenty of specific characteristics of Berlin that make it uh, good for the protests. Davis mentioned some key figures in the Berlin theater protests, such as Rudy Duchke, who was a prominent spokesman of the German left-wing movement in the 60s. He stressed things like social change through developing democracy, and he was against violence and stressed slow progress. And another person was Benno Unesorg. He was a German university student. He was a first time protester. He was protesting the visit of the Iranian Shah, and he was shot by a policeman in the back of the head. And his death served as a rallying point for the left wing movement, it helped mobilize everybody, and it revealed that protests were unpredictable and didn't always go as planned. And this is the German University of Berlin, in German that's the Freie Universität Berlin, also known as FU. It's the uh, it was the center of the left wing German movement and held many large scale protests. The city of Berlin also lent itself. Its locations lent itself to protests. Uh, Davis describes Berlin as a capital of the scene in an unbelievably heated atmosphere. People just naturally gravitated towards it because of excitement, fear, politics, and personal desire. And we really thought this was, this was similar to uh, the Harlem Renaissance, actually, in that it was a place uh, that people just really wanted to be in and around uh, to experience uh, all that was going on there. And Davis writes that the existing hard life was a unifying force, melding activists together over the heat of opposition to them. Uh, and this can definitely uh, be compared with the Harlem Renaissance when uh, civil rights issues were extremely prevalent during that time. Um, and the collective hardships faced in Berlin, uh, collective hardships faced during the Harlem Renaissance and just in Harlem period, uh, really brought people together and spurred collective action and reform and protest itself. And it can take many forms. And these are just, that's the Cotton Club from Harlem, and this is just a, a painting during, from the Harlem Renaissance. Davis also talks about the scene life, which represents the human desire to fit into a crowd and connect with the larger world. And this is also the innate human desire to have beliefs and values validated, uh, emotions such as excitement, fun, sense of being part of something, and even fear, were able to be released through protests and activism. And she also writes about a group called the Sprayers, um, who did graffiti. and. Um, and they spray painted phrases such as, here speech has been whitewashed, here words have been painted over, uh, ironic, uh, stuff like that. And um, graffiti, we talked about graffiti a little bit as like a different form of protest. Not, you only need one person, it's kind of like devoid of real like action, I guess, other than natural one-time action. But it still has great um, publicizability, which is a term that Davis used, um, and it can have as great an impact. Um, in some cases, it can have as great an impact as a mass protest with tons of people, I guess. Davis talks a lot about Berlin as a stage and how the world's always watching Berlin and how actions and everyone are noticed. It magnified the dissidents, and people felt like a protest was never a wasted effort because someone's always paying attention and watching them. And Berlin was considered uh, an actor and a stage for the protest. Um, with its landscape uh, playing the role as part of the protest and the stage itself. Um, and there were many venues talked about for the meetings for such uh, groups creating movements and protests, such as bars, um, kitchen table style meetings, and group housing. And the one common thread between all three of these places is that uh, there were lots of young people uh, in close proximity brought together who just really wanted uh, to create change and better their living environment. Davis talks about uh, a couple different places where activists would protest, and one was the universities. 
such as the Free University of Berlin. With a large number of students on campuses, it was only natural that protests take place, and they happened everywhere on campus, wherever the activists could get their opinions heard and their message out. And the cityscape, activists took advantage of city spaces, because in the city, there were possibilities to network with other activists, and it helped contrast their view of the city's potential with the disparity of ideas, and gave the protesters the opportunity to have their voice heard on a large stage. And another interesting place was the Berlin Wall. The wall was actually, in some places, it was built in East Berlin, which means West German police couldn't get into East Berlin, which means there are a few meters of space by the wall where protesters could protest without fear of being arrested. So they often held loud parties, music in this space. And these are some questions. We had uh, a couple questions arose for us. Um, what characteristics are needed in a modern day city to promote activism and protests? Um, and then our kind of our main question that we really thought um, was good was activists kind of think of themselves as different. Oh. Activists think of is it going to advance? Think of themselves as different from um, normalos. That's what the term that Davis used. Um, but they help set society's norms. Um, by either influencing change directly through their protests and activism, or um, in some cases by providing such a radical and stark contrast to the norm that uh, society's uh, levels of acceptability and the actual norm itself becomes more clear. So our question was, by definition, do activists uh, automatically affect change just by being activists? Um, and also, as previous writers have stated, the city can be considered an organism, and can a protest be considered one as well? Why are we 